New Patriots. And now for the starting lineup. of the Glen Grizzlies. The Grizzlies are coached by Zach Darling, Alberto Guzman, Zach Texro, and Tobin Schneider. And now for the East View Patriots. Georgetown, Texas for tonight's high school baseball matchup. Leading off, number nine, shortstop, Ben Burton. And the East View Patriots. Good evening, Cameron Martin. Number two, second baseman, Ryan Pullen. Number 11, center fielder, Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. We are here for our first home broadcast of the season where the Patriots will be hosting the Grizzlies from Glen High School out in Leander. want to go ahead and take you through the lineups for tonight. Of course, batting first will be the Grand Glizzly, Grizzlies. Excuse me. Leading off will be center fielder Brett Hall, then shortstop Luke Berryhill, catcher A.J. Click, D.H. Holden Harris, right fielder Campbell Kriswanski, first baseman Rome Foronato, second baseman Ethan Toller, third baseman Justin Qureshi, and finally left fielder Austin Wilson taking the mound tonight for Glenn. We will see him in the bottom half of the first will be Jake Houghton. And for Eastview, out on the mound, Getting started here tonight will be Patrick Reyes, number 12. Leading off, shortstop Ben Berglund. Then second baseman Ryan Pullen, center fielder Tyler Huerta. Third baseman Jesus Santana. Patrick Reyes will be hitting in the lineup in the five hole. He is the pitcher, of course. Andrew Godinez, the DH, will be hitting six. 
Gary Torres, the first baseman. Joe Quintanilla, the catcher. Rendell Ellis out in left field. And finally, the designated fielder for this evening's contest will be number seven, Trey Walter, out in right. Both these teams all warmed up and ready to go. It's a bit of a gloomy day out here in Georgetown, just under 70 degrees for our first pitch temperature. Eastview rocking the home whites for the first time on the broadcast. Coming up to the plate now is Brett Hall. Hall steps into the box, a right-handed hitter. And away we go. First pitch is chopped down the third baseline. Eats up the third baseman a little bit. He'll be up for the throw, and it's going to go wide and to the dugout, but not going to be able to advance on the throw. So Brett Hall with an infield single, as that would have been a tough one to beat out anyway. So Glenn starting with one on with nobody out. Luke Berryhill, the shortstop, going to be the second hitter here. That took a tough hop on Santana, and he couldn't make the throw as he was trying to rush it over. But Hall with some speed down the line probably would have would have beat that out anyway. They're going to lay down the bunt here. It's going to go right back to the mound. The quick throw over is going to be low, and they'll get him on the tag, not the force. So a good play there at first base for Torres to be able to make the out. It does advance the runner, but out number one. So Brett Hall moves up to second base. Brings A.J. Click to the plate. He's a catcher for the Grizzlies wearing their orange top, says the away uniform. Reyes to the mound. Checks the runner at second base. His first pitch is going to be high for ball one. It's been an aggressive approach for Glenn here to start the game, trying to jump on some of these first pitches. But Click takes the first for the first ball of the game. Runner goes, the throw down is going to be just late. So a stolen base here for Brett Hall, and with one out, Glenn has a runner threatening at third base. And Hall officially on base due to an error for the official scorekeepers. So this run will not be earned as this one's roped down the third baseline, but foul, just getting around on it a little bit too early was A.J. Click. The count goes 2-1 and one on him. Holden Harris, the D.H., on deck for the Grizzlies. The pitch from Reyes. That skips into the dirt. It's outside for ball three. Eastview trying to uh, avoid some first inning struggles here as in last night's game against Liberty Hill, the Panthers were able to get out to an eight to nothing lead by the end of the first inning. That was all because of a three run shot to cap off the run by Garrett Neely. As that's a five pitch walk going to AJ Click. So runners on the corners now for Holden Harris. One out, he has a chance to knock in the first run of the game. Reyes back to the mound. The umpire steps out for a moment. Now stepping in is Harris. First pitch to him is swung on and popped into the air and back. That's going to go out of play for strike one, so an 0-1 count now to the Grizzly DH. The 0-1 runner going. This one's chopped in the infield, and that'll get over and into the gap. One run will score. 
East Butte still trying to chase this down. They're going to send the runner click home from first, and he will score. So it's a two-run double there for the D.H. Holden Harris. And the first inning struggles continue for Eastview. As that's now a combined ten runs in the last two games. Still just one out here in the first inning. That brings up Campbell Chriswanski, the right fielder. That run to Hall not earned. As he did reach via an error, so technically the first hit of the ball game for Glenn goes there on the two-run double. They're staying aggressive. This one's floated in the air to left. Huerta comes on to make the catch. Runner will have to retreat back to second base, so that's out number two, and a good job there from Huerta arranging over to make the play. That'll bring up the first baseman, Rome Foronato. Another righty in this lineup for Glenn. The pitch for where, uh, for Reyes, excuse me, that's going to be outside for ball one. Toller the on-deck man if we get there. But Reyes focusing on getting out of this inning right now. One runner in scoring position. Here's the 1-0. That's taken, but it catches the outside corner of the strike zone for strike number one. It's one and one. The Glenn first baseman looking to bring home the third run of the inning. This one's high for ball two. First, or excuse me, in the next pitch here, the 2-1. And that's going to be high and tight, nearly catching Foronado there. It pushes the count to 3-1 and one in danger of putting another man on here in the first inning. Glenn enters tonight at 7-6-0. and They are 0-1 in district play, however, with a loss last night, 5-2, against Crosstown rival Georgetown. Now this one's punched into center field, Huerta ranging back. He gets under it and makes the play in center field. A couple tough plays out in center for Tyler Huerta. Finishes out the top half of the first inning, but not before two runs score. A walk, a hit, and an error result in two runs for the Glenn Grizzlies, as now Eastview will come to the plate. We'll go ahead and keep it here. to take you through the lineup one more time. It will be Ben Berglund up. He is playing shortstop. He'll be the leadoff man here for Eastview this afternoon. Ryan Pullen and Tyler Huerta will be your first three to the box for Eastview. Going through it last night was a bit of a struggle offensively for Eastview. It did put up two runs, but were held to a pretty low team batting average. Ben Berglund was a bright spot for the offense along with Gary Torres, who will be hitting seventh here tonight. Berglund went two for four in yesterday's game, had a pair of singles. Ryan Pullen went 0 for two, but he was hit by a pitch. And the three-hole hitter, Tyler Huerta, did go 0 for three. It's a pretty rare occurrence for him to uh, to get blanked like that. So going to need him to come alive today to avoid dropping to an 0-2 start in district play. Now on the mound is Jake Houghton for the Glenn Grizzlies. They're out getting warm. So one hit on the game for Glenn and one error for Eastview. We head now to the bottom, bottom of the first. Let the pitcher get warm up here. He's going to give him two more before we get going. Very windy day out here, as you can see out there. The American flag in left center field is sticking almost straight out at this point. After yesterday, it was very warm out at the ballpark. We were at Liberty Hill, and today it's it's a very gloomy game. 68 degrees. It's been cloudy pretty much all day. Thankfully, the drizzles that we were experiencing earlier today, at least we were down in Austin, uh, have let up. And we have some decent weather for baseball, not the best. We'd like to get a little, a few of these clouds out of the way, but 
68 degrees, not too bad at all. It's it's a nice feeling outside. But now here's Houghton with Ben Berglund stepping to the plate, the shortstop, the utility player. He's not taking the first pitch. This one's floated over into right field, and that will drop for a base hit as Ben Berglund continues his hot hitting streak, jumps on the first pitch, and gets on base. So both teams getting the leadoff man on. However, Eastview does it with a base hit. Glenn did it with an error, and that will bring up Ryan Pullen, who will try and move Berglund over and get this first inning rally going for Eastview. Pullen not shy. He's showing bunt all the way. Here's Houghton's pitch. He's going to take it. That's going to catch the zone. Strike one. Jesus Santana, the four hitter. So here's Pullen still showing bump. This one high. They're going to throw over. This one too high. Lucky because Berglund kind of got caught in no man's land after the, uh, the, the pitch went high. So now a 1-1 one, one count to Ryan Pullen. Still showing bunt, tries to attack it, and that's going to be strike two. So might uh, might go away from the bunt here with the two strikes. The throw over is not in time, so no pick off there for Berglund. See how the approach changes for Pullen. He's not showing bunt anymore, of course. And he swings it. That's a good call. As that is off the glove of the third baseman, Qureshi. And they will move station to station. As Pullen got some good contact there, Qureshi just unable to make the play. Went off the tip of his glove on the uh, on the uh, third baseline. So back-to-back -back singles to start the game off. As Eastview is seeing Jake Houghton pretty well right now, they'll try to keep it going with Tyler Huerta. The lefty stepping into the box. Runner in scoring position as Huerta takes the ball outside. 1 0. Center fielder got outs number two and three in that game. As this one's going to be in the dirt and going to get away. Runner. Berglund going to come all the way around. We will have a play at the plate, but it's not in time. That's a very wild pitch getting all the way over into the Grizzly dugout. Gave Berglund the time to score on a wild pitch all the way from second base. Ryan Pullen able to advance all the way to third. So Huerta still with the chance at an RBI here. Just not two. Taking there, so it's a 3-0 count to Huerta. And it's a tough start here for Jake Houghton. Houghton the 3-0. That's going to miss just outside for ball four. Looked like Huerta wasn't even quite sure about that one. Looked pretty close. As, as Tyler... Not sure he wanted a four-pitch walk. I might have wanted to stay in and get a few good swings at it, but he'll take the base. Now we got runners on the corner, still with nobody out. Hey, Sue Santana, the clean-up hitter, coming to the plate now. He was one for three yesterday. Just a single for him. But now a chance at an RBI. This one's high and tight, right at his eyes. Ball one. Now the 1-0. Santana back into the box. The 1-0 pitch. That's chopped foul down the third baseline, 1-1. One one. Patriots have a chance here for a big inning. Still nobody out. Pitch on the way. That's outside. A good stop there by the catcher, A.J. Click. 
Two and one. This one swung on and chopped back towards us. Into the net for strike two. Patrick Ray is the man on deck. He's the pitcher here in this one. The 2-2. Runner goes. Ball is low, so we will have a 3-2. The throw is cut off. Well, the runner couldn't go home if he wanted to, but Tyler Huerta will have a stolen base there. So the count goes full to Santana. Attempting the hit and run. This one's popped high into the air. This one is heading back and out of play, so we'll have another full count pitch. Santana staying in there, grinding out this at bat. Worked it full. Now looking at another full count pitch, he steps back into the box, trying to get pulling home from third. Here's the pitch. Swung on, and that'll get through the infield. One run will score. They're waving around Huerta. And no throw will be made. So Eastview takes the lead on a two-run single right up the middle for Jesus Santana. And the hot start continues for Eastview as Patrick Reyes steps into the box. He's on the mound today. He is 0 for 3 yesterday. But now he has inherited... Jesus Santana on first base. Looks like we may have a pitching change. Bit of a similar start to um, to the game yesterday. Just the shoe is on the other foot. In the first inning, Eastview couldn't get an out against Liberty Hill. And right now, Glenn can't get an out against Eastview. We're heading into the fifth batter everyone has reached safely. So to recap the inning, they're going to leave Houghton out there. Ben Berglund got on via a single. Ryan Pullen pushed him up to second base with a single of his own. Then on a wild pitch, Berglund scored. Pullen advanced from first to third. Where to walk, stole a base, and then Santana singles them both home. We've got a three to nothing game, or a three to two game, excuse me. <laughs> and a swing and a miss for Reyes here in the bottom of the first. So 0-1 to the pitcher. After the meeting at the mound, Houghton goes up 0-2 against the first batter. Sometimes those meetings can be pretty effective. Godina is, is on deck. So now an 0-2 to Reyes. That one's hit well, but right to the first baseman. The short hop eats him up a little bit. They'll go up, and they can't get the tag. So everybody is safe here. And Patrick Reyes will wait for it. Not sure if that's a uh, single or an error, but looked like a tough hop for the third baseman. Imagine that'll go in as a single. So everything working here for Eastview early. It's got to be discouraging for Jake Houghton as he worked a pretty good at-bat for some soft contact, just a, a weird tough bounce. And now you see that uh, that first baseman over there playing pretty shallow at ate him up, and they couldn't get the throw over. It looks like they're showing bunt. First baseman comes up. They're shifting around out there. But now ball one to Andrew Godinez, who's the DH here tonight. Andrew came in in the seventh inning of yesterday's game as a pinch hitter. Was able to get on believe via single yeah via single so now a one and one to him Gary Torres is on deck it was another bright spot for the Eastview offense yesterday you might have a, a high scoring game here well it gets the bunt down and that one's going to leak foul so a one two now to Andrew Godinez
They've tried to get a few down, but Eastview struggling to get the bunts down early. They tried to get it for Poland, but Poland ended up singling. Now a 1-2 to Godina, or uh, yes, Godinez. He chases this one out of the zone, and that's going to be strike three. So the first out of the inning goes on a strikeout to Andrew Godinez, a swinging strike at that. So Houghton finally able to send one down. That brings up Gary Torres. The first baseman went two for three yesterday. So a strong outing for him. Now he's got a runner in scoring position, another at first base. Takes that one way outside for ball one. This one he swings on, pops it foul. This one trailing out of play, and it will end up out of play. So for Torres, we've got a one and one. Still threatening. Santana up at second base. That one catches the outside corner, well framed by A.J. Click, pushes the count to one and two. Still just one out here in the bottom of the first inning. Two men on. Wind kicking up a little bit more than it was even before. As here's the one two. That one skips into the dirt. Runners won't be able to advance. A.J. Click, he's having to work out here in this first inning. But he's made some good plays. This could easily be even more out of hand if Click wasn't uh, wasn't able to get some of these balls stopped. But now a two and two. From Houghton, here's the pitch. That one's high for ball three. The count goes full. Quintanilla, the one on deck. Houghton throwing a lot of pitches here in this first inning. It's the second batter who's worked the full count. This one he chops. This one's going to get to the second baseman. The throw over will not be in time. The throw gets away from the pitcher, and now coming home and safe at the plate. Now throwing to third. The ball is high. The runner going to come home. And getting all the way to third will be Gary Torres. So two runs score there. Goldman in there to pinch run, comes around to score. So a single that turns into a triple on several throwing errors on that one play, but Gary Torres now in at third base off the single. Couple of throwing errors. They tried to get the out at first, of course, and then they went over to third. The ball went high over towards the East View dugout. The runner came in there, and once the throw was coming to the plate, Torres was able to sneak all the way to third base. Now taking there is Quintanilla. Now he is up in the count two and one. Here's the 2-1. This one swung and lifted high and deep down the left field line, and that will be out of play. But he gave that thing a ride. 2-2. Two two. Still just one out in the inning for Eastview. Here's the pitch. He chased that one outside of the zone. The throw down to first base is in time, so that'll be out number two. Quintanilla goes down on strikes. So Eastview, the Patriots have sent 
all nine batters to the plate here in this first inning. This is Rendell Ellis. Left-handed hitter steps into the box. Runner on third. He takes the first pitch. That catches the outside corner for strike one. Hot looking to get out of the inning without any more damage. As this one's hit sharply to first base, but getting the glove on it and making the play is Rome Foronato. So that ends the inning. Five runs score on five singles. A base on balls, a few throwing errors there from Glenn. And that does it for the first frame. It was an eventful one. Patriots lead it 5-2 to two as we head to the top of the second inning. Going to go ahead and take our first break. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Back in on the first inning, or top of the second, we've already got some quick action, a high throw, but a ground out there to third base for Ethan Toller on the first pitch. So that's how the second will start with a quick ground out as Patrick Reyes has already faced seven batters, but Glenn has been so aggressive that he hasn't really thrown that many pitches at this point compared to uh, what you would expect based on the... Uh, amount of batters he has faced. But now it's Justin Koreshi looking at the first pitch for strike number one. Austin Wilson, the third hitter in the inning for Glenn. So it's Toler, Koreshi, Wilson up this inning. Toler already retired. Koreshi already looking at a strike. And now that one just high. Quintanilla. Did a good job framing it. Fooled me, but called the ball, so it's one and one. One one skips, and that one a little more clear. Two and one. Reyes. Throws and he's a little low on it. He loses his hat. Got to find it again here. As it's now a 3 1 count to Koreshi. Playing at third base. He chops this one. That's going to go foul. Just foul tip. The count goes full. Coming out of the dugout to chase that one down was Hector Perez. That one misses outside. Didn't give him a chance. Is Koreshi going to be the first base runner of the second inning for the Glen Grizzlies? As Reyes is, is throwing his hardest, he's lost his hat in these last couple pitches here. Or maybe it's windy, or maybe his hat doesn't fit. But now up 
This is the left fielder Wilson looks at the first pitch and Reyes struggling a little bit here. His pitch is um, trending downward. He's skipped a few of these and they've been low out of the zone. So Austin Wilson looks at ball one. This one skips too. Qureshi stumbled a little bit. Ooh, they had him there, but it skips into right field. So Qureshi will end up with the stolen base. They had him dead to rights on the pickoff, but just couldn't quite make the throw over. So instead, Qureshi will head to the uh, second base there. As that's a big swing for Eastview. As instead of nobody on with two outs, he got one out with a runner in scoring position. Plus it's 2-0 now. And now 3-0 to Austin Wilson. Now the 3-0. That one misses high for ball four. A four-pitch walk to Austin Wilson. And now... The eight and nine hitters are aboard. So the error doesn't end up mattering all that much as uh, Qureshi would have advanced on the walk anyhow. But now that brings up Brett Hall, who reached via an error his first time up. Grounded to third, but the Patriots were not able to make the play. This one belted into left field. That'll bring one runner home. This one going to get all the way to the back of the wall. They are waving the second runner home. Here's the throw. No play at the plate, and they will force Brett Hall back to second base. So Brett Hall clearing the bases, bringing home two. And now we've got a whole new ball game. It's 5-4 to four with one out, a runner in scoring position. Austin Wilson was rocketing around the diamond there, scoring all the way from first as that one got all the way back to the wall. Rendell Ellis had to go chase that thing down. This one grounded to short. They're going to go to third with it. The throw is low, and that will allow a run to score. Berglund trying to go and get the lead runner. But instead, that brings home Brent Hall from second base. He was aggressive trying to get to third, and now Luke Berryhill reaches via the air. He advances to second on the throw as well. So now A.J. Click to the, to the plate with one on in scoring position. We've got a tie ball game. Not a... What a real pitcher's struggle here. So it's been a very high offensive game. Two runs in the first, three runs in the second here for Glenn. Here's the pitch. That's going to just miss outside. As if this continues, we are in for a long game tonight as this one fouled off for strike one. Runner goes. This one's lifted high to left. Field. This thing trailing back, that's going to skip back off of the wall. So one run will score with these. That's another double coming in. A.J. Click sends in a runner. And that will be another run batted in here. Luke Berryhill gets on via the air, comes home to score. Now Glenn has the lead. So it looks like we may have a pitching change here for Eastview. Patrick Reyes, his night might be done after one and a third.
So two walks, a double, an error, and then another double here in this inning for Glenn gives them the lead back. That's a four-run top of the second. We are still in the middle of it. There's only one out here. Starters have struggled here for Eastview in these first two games as it looks like they're going to leave Reyes on the mound. Let's give him a little talking to try to boost his confidence a little bit. Now Holden Harris will step to the plate as now we have a pinch runner. Well, sort of. It's a courtesy runner. At the UIL level, you can uh, you can pinch run for the pitcher and the catcher without actually having to remove them from the game. A.J. Click was the one who just hit that double, and now out there at second base is number two, Logan Worley. So Worley will be running, but hold, uh, excuse me, uh, A.J. Click will be able to come back in the game as the catcher. Now Holden Harris to the plate. The D.H. doubled his last time up. Going to look to keep it hot. This one missing outside, ball one. As Reyes is having a hard time finding the zone right now, but when he does, it feels like Glenn's all over it. So 6-5 game. This one's chopped foul down the third base line. That one just squeaked over the line, and now that's one and one to Harris. Gonna have a very full scorebook by the time th this game and this inning is done. As still just one out here in the top of the second, a ball and a strike. Harris steps in, takes a big cut at that one. It's strike number two. Ray is looking for his first strike out of the game. The one two. That one misses high, so the count goes two and two. Krishwanski on deck. There is no double play in order here. Wind staying a factor tonight. That flag out there is will be whipped around as here's the two two. He reached for it, but he got some aluminum on it. Here's the throw over. Should be an easy one, and it is. The runner does advance to third base, so the former A.J. Click. It's Worley over there now on third base. So a 4-3 put out for Holden Harris brings up the right fielder, Campbell Krishwanski. Flew out to center field for the second out of the first inning, his last time up. Here's a pitch to him. That one's way outside, ball one. It's the eighth batter of the inning for the Glen Grizzlies. Runner on third, two outs. 1-0 count. As this one's chopped to first base and a beautiful play over there at the bag for Gary Torres. An unassisted put out. Diving stop to end a very productive inning for the Glen Grizzlies. A couple of walks, a couple of doubles. And an error result in a four-run inning for the visiting Glen Grizzlies. We head to the bottom of the first Eastview Trails. Just by one, it's six to five. It will be the top of the order due up once again. Ben Berglund, one for one on the day, will step back into the box right after this. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Back in it. This is the bottom of the second now. Eastview with the chance to get some of those runs back. Did put up five in the first inning, so this is just their second go at it. Ben Berglund, Ryan Pullen, and Tyler Huerta will be the minimum batters uh, in this second inning. Hopefully you can get a few more up. 
Berglund is one for one today. He went two for four yesterday, so he's on a bit of a hot streak. Three hits in his last five ABs, uh, at least that we've seen. Ryan Pullen also singling his first time up. Here's the first pitch to Berglund. Staying aggressive, he floats this one into shallow center, but that'll be an easy put out for Brett Hall, who's playing out there. Pretty shallow in center field for that. So Berglund sits down. Ryan Pullen will come to the plate. He was hit by a pitch yesterday. He takes the first pitch for a ball. The 1-0. That one's fouled right back towards us. Even though you've got the net and a few panes of glass in front of it, it's hard not to jump. <laughs> the pitch comes right back at you like that. So the 1-1. One, one. This one's punched over to the shortstop, fielded cleanly, and the throw over is in time. So two up, two down, a far cry from the first inning as Jake Houghton starting to settle in. So now all of a sudden, after struggling immensely, the first five batters reaching, Godinez struck out, Torres got on base. But now, five out of the last six batters retired by Jake Houghton. That brings up Tyler Huerta, who walked his first time up as he sends this one Deep to right field. That's over his head. That'll get down and all the way to the wall. Where to getting on his horse. He's going to settle in to second base for a stand-up double. A two-out double for Tyler Huerta. Snaps a no-hit streak. Didn't hit yesterday. Uh, he did walk today, so he has been on base both times. That one, some very solid contact by Huerta. Got just about every bit of it. Brings up Santana, who also singled his first time up. So two outs looking to get the tying run home here in the bottom of the second inning. Santana watches that first one in for a strike. That was a little high for him. So the 0-1. And I hope all your brackets are doing okay through the first afternoon. This one's going to be fouled off and out of play. 0-2. I did pick Richmond, so I feel pretty good about that. It's my it's one of my number one rules is no matter what the seating is, I've done it ever since I was a kid, you pick the spiders. They beat Iowa. People at Iowa going far. Not me. But here's the O2. That's a swing and a miss. A tough A B there for Jesus Santana as Jake Houghton got the best of him on a three pitch swinging strikeout. That does it there. No damage done. Tyler Huerta did double, but that'll do it for Eastview in the bottom of the second. We head or the yes, we head to the top of the third, and it will be Rome Foranato leading off for the Glen Grizzlies. Can't take too much credit though. I did not have Michigan winning that game. We'll be right back. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Back in it for the top of the third. Jack Farrell joining you here tonight for this one. It's been a 
highly offensive game here. Glenn put up two in the first, four in the second. Eastview blanked there in the second, but did put up five in the first. We've got a 6-5 to game. You see it right there on your screen for Glenn. Stepping to the plate is Foronado. Patrick Reyes getting ready for his third inning of work. Might be getting someone up in the pen momentarily. As Reyes did struggle mightily there in that second inning. But Eastview hasn't been doing them many favors with the defense, and this one's punched into left field and leaping catch made by Rendell Ellis. That one just, just into the top of his glove. He could see it from here. He kind of pinched that one, but goes in as an out. Lucky play there to hold on to it for Rendell Ellis. With the wind on a line drive like that, it's uh, it can take a hold of it. So Ellis is kind of having to scramble out there in left field to find it, and he did, was able to get the put out. So a nice play there by the left fielder for the Patriots. Now that brings up Ethan Toler. Ethan Toler grounded out to short his first time up. As he swings and misses, chasing this one low, it's one and one to him. Ooh, just high there, ball two. Qureshi, the on-deck man for the Glenn, Gl Glenn Grizzlies. So nobody on with one out. This one's chopped to third base, ranging over. The throw is low, but a pick there at first to get the out. Gary Torres has been flashing leather over there at first base here today. Jesus Santana delivering the throw. So, pitchers settling in here, two up, two down for both of them here in the uh, last innings that they have pitched. Haunton there in the second, now in the top of the third for Reyes. Back-to-back -back ground outs to third for Ethan Toler. That one misses to Justin Koreshi, who reached on base on balls his last time up. Came around to score last inning as well. It was the first of four. Right now, just three hits for Glenn. Despite those six runs, Patriots with six runs, or six hits to just five runs. But it's those three errors that they've got to clean up as this one's going to catch the zone as Qureshi looks at strike one. A 2-1 count to the eight-hole hitter playing out at third base today. So this one's fouled back. We've got strike two. Both these teams a little more evenly matched than that Liberty Hill juggernaut that Eastview had to face yesterday. Both of them 0-1 in district play. As this one's lifted over the shortstop, Berglund in the left field as that one's going to get away from the left fielder. But now Huerta going to try and get him out at second. He kind of hesitated there, wasn't sure if he wanted to go, finally decided on going. So Qureshi with the single and advances to second on another error here for this Patriot defense. Now coming to bat is Austin Wilson. Also walked his first time up. So both of these pitchers in their last outings Get the first two and then let on this next guy. And the, the goal is, of course, to limit the damage. Where to doubled. Kreshi effectively with a double as he's there on second base. Now Austin Wilson looks at ball one. Pitch from Reyes. That's in there for strike one. The one and one. Beautiful pitch there from Reyes. It's strike two. Austin Wilson, how to pitches to look at. Double in the second. 
As the one-two is lifted into right, and that's going to fall in. A runner is going to come home. Well, here's the throw to the plate. Is going to be not in time. The runner now going to come down to second base. The throw will be in time, but is it on the money? It is not. Couldn't get the tag on him if it was just a little bit further to the right side. Berglund would have had a shot at it, but instead it's a single. And on the throw, Austin Wilson moves up to second base, but more importantly drives in Koreshi from second base. And now we've got a 7-5 to five ball game in the top of the third inning. So if you like pitching duels, this is not the game for you. It's now a 1-0 count for the lead-off man, Brett Hall, who is he's batted once every inning here so far. 1-0. Swing and a miss, strike one. Hall is, well, one for two. He has reached both times, but in the first it was an error. So he's got a double. He's got a pair of RBI as well. 1-1. One one. Looks at that one just outside for ball two. So a good piece of hitting from Wilson. Pushes the lead to two now for Glenn. As the throwback is not in time, very close. A bang-bang play at second base as Berglund just late on the tag. Never want to get picked off at second base. Now here's two and one. Two outs now. That one misses high, ball three. 3-1 three count, two outs. Brett Hall with his third at bat of the game. Here's the pitch. Looks at that one just high, ball four. So now runners just on first and second as Austin Wilson will stay put on the walk. Luke Berryhill, the shortstop, coming in. 0 for 1 on the day. But this is his third at-bat sacrifice bunt his first time up. Chops it towards the pitcher. This one might get through the hole. Play made, and the flip over is in time. They go the short way with it. There to make the play is Ryan Pullen flipping it back to Berglund to make the final out of the inning. So finally, Eastview able to get out of that inning. Just one run scores, though, on a single, a pair of singles, a walk. So now Glenn pushes their lead 7-5. We will be back for the bottom of the third in just a moment. It will be the pitcher, Patrick Reyes, leading off for Eastview. We'll also see Godinez and Torres in the inning. We'll be back in about 35 seconds. Interested in Vipe Campus? Vipe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vipe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Eastview gets out of the top of the third on a nifty defensive play. Grounder to second base, flip back to the shortstop covering second. Only one run scores for Glenn, could have been a whole lot worse. It's Patrick Reyes back to the plate. He's one for one with a single, came around to score in the first inning, looking to get the offense going once again. After they couldn't get anything going there in the second inning, just four batters faced for Jay Cotton in that one. He is back out there for his third inning of work. Number eight sets to throw as this one's lifted high and shallow left, and it will drop in right between the left and center fielders. Not able to make the play on it was Brett Hall. As Reyes reaches, that's the second time in three innings 
that the Patriots have gotten the leadoff man on, and that is back-to-back -back singles for Patrick Reyes. Brings up Andrew Godinez, who struck out his first time up. Jay Cotton, two strikeouts on the day, including one to this man right here, the DH. He was a pinch hitter in yesterday's game, came in and did get on base with a single. So looking to keep that alive. He takes the first pitch well inside for ball one, number 16, Andrew Godinez. As Goldman going to pinch run here for the Patriots. Patrick Reyes, of course, the pitcher. So he was able to come out. This one's blooped into center field. That'll get down. Goldman going to hold up as this pitch, or the throw, excuse me, from center field was right there. Goldman probably smart to hold up. But now he's up at second base. As Goldman's the de facto courtesy runner here for the Eastview Patriots. Godinez on with a single. That brings up Gary Torres, who's been hitting it very well lately. Four, three out of his last four have been hits. Including his last time up was a single. First pitch to him, he's swinging at. That's going to be foul tipped back for strike one. Quintanilla, the catcher on deck. Now the first baseman, Torres, who has had a very good game defensively. Made a couple tough plays over there at first base. A couple unassisted ones. Now he's looking at 0-1. Sure, Houghton's all right. An hour into this game. In the bottom of the third, here is the 0-1 pitch. Takes that high for ball one. The 1-1 one, one pitch. That's going to be well outside, ball two. So Torres seeing it well here in his second at-bat of the game, looking to get one of those runs back with anything into the outfield. Goldman's got some speed over there at second base, and he's itching to run. The 2-1 is fouled off and out of play. So we've got a 2-2. Two -two. Wind's still a factor here tonight as the temperature is dropping steadily, just bit by bit here tonight. Sun finally down as Torres is going to take that one well outside. The count goes full. Houghton in danger now, loading the bases with nobody out. Got to give Torres a competitive pitch here. Pitch comes in, fought off by Torres. Way to stay alive. He'll get another chance at it. Houghton looking in. Another 3-2. He misses with it. Torres drops the bat. He will head down to first base. That advances Reyes. Excuse me, Goldman. who's pinch running for Reyes to third base. And Godina is up to second. So now they're full for Joe Quintanilla. Jake Houghton all out of places to put him for the catcher. Quintanilla struck out his first time up. Went 0 for 3 yesterday, so still looking for that first hit in district play. He checks the swing there as that one finds the zone. Strike one. Fourth batter of the inning. Rendell Ellis is on deck for the Patriots. Ben Berglund in the hole. The 0-1. That one skips in the dirt. Ball one. The 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's popped up high into the air. This one may be staying in the field of play, and it is, and ranging back to make that catch. 
A.J. Click been working hard behind the plate here tonight. Chases that one down, looks it in, and makes the catch for out number one, Joe Quintanilla. A pop-up on the infield. Base is still juiced for Randall Ellis. Grounded out to first base his first time up. Also 0 for 3 in yesterday's game, so Patriots looking for a little more production out of the bottom of the order here in a big spot. Got to get one home here. The 1-0 pitch to the left fielder. Misses low for ball two, so a hitter's count. Ellis should get something to swing at here. That is if Houghton can find uh, can find his spots. But now one out, bases loaded. The 2-0 pitch to Ellis. He swings on it. This one's chopped to third base, but the, fir or the first baseman can't come up with it. He'll just have to take the out at first, but a run does come home to score. So Ellis, two ground outs to first base. As Berglund walking up to the Phineas and Ferb team. I respect it. That's a good show. It's a great show. Fortunately for Eastview, no play was made outside of the ground out to first base. So two unassisted putouts for Randall Ellis, but this time he gets an RBI out of it. Brings up Berglund, who's one for two on the day. Scored on a wild pitch in the first. Takes that one, strike one. Owen one. Takes that one, misses outside, ball one. So the count, one and one to the shortstop, Berglund. Also has the unique opportunity of batting once every inning so far. So this is his third plate appearance. He flew out to center field last time, so he's getting good contact. So he watches that one in for strike two, just catching the outside corner. So now runners at second and third. With two outs, Eastview able to get one back here, but they'd like to keep the rally going. A 1-2 pitch to Berglund. Houghton still out there. Misses outside the 2-2. Two and two. The 1-2 high, that hit him. So that'll work to keep the rally going. That juices the bases once again. As Berglund heads to first base, runners will stay put elsewhere. So Goldman came home to score as he was pinch hitting for Reyes. So now it's Godinez on third base and Torres on second. Ben Berglund on first base, Ryan Pullen who is a single and it out, and that one will get in to center field. That brings one ho runner home. Another coming around to score. The play at the plate is not in time. That's a two-run single for the two-hole hitter, Ryan Pullen. Gets himself a pair of RBI, gives Eastview the lead back. It's 8-7 to seven here in the bottom of the third. Good piece of hitting right there for Ryan Pullen, getting out and getting aggressive on that one. Brings home two more. Berglund only able to advance to uh, one more base on that. So he's up at second. Pullen's up at first. And that will be the end of the night for Jake Houghton. Gives up nine hits to Patriot players. Don't have every stat in front of me. Uh, eight runs uh, on the board as he was on the mound, but certainly not all of those were earned. So we will have a pitching change. Looks like they're pulling somebody out of the dugout for this. So no uh, offensive or defensive substitutions yet, I should say. 
on the mound there is number 13, Shane Monahan. An Irish name for your Irish day. As he'll have a couple pitches to get warm, we'll go ahead and take a quick break, just 30 seconds, and we will be right back. Let's see if Eastview can keep the two-out rally going. They lead it 8-7 to seven in the bottom of the third. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. And we're back. Monahan getting warm on the mound. Number 13. So Jake Houghton's day is done. Eight runs allowed on his arm. Two and two-thirds inning is what he goes. Now we are stuck here in the bottom of the third. Eight to seven ball game. It was a very short short one yesterday. It didn't even go uh, two hours, I don't think. And we will, uh, we will be well over that here today, I assume. Huerta to the plate. Huerta one for one with a walk and a double. It was the only thing doing in that second inning for Eastview, but they have come alive here in the third. Three runs scored already with another in scoring position. As he takes the first pitch for a strike, that one just catching the outside corner. So an 0-1 to the center fielder. Hasn't had his name called too much defensively since that first inning, but he did have two flyouts going his way. Back-to-back -back batters. Swings at this one. This one's going to get through the infield. That should bring one home. And now staying there at second will be pulling. The run will come home safely. And now advancing each one base are pulling and Huerta. So Tyler Huerta with an RBI single bringing home Ben Berglund. Ryan pulling. Advances to second, then to third on the throw. Huerta advances to second on the throw as well. That will go in as a single for him. This is the second inning today that Eastview will send. Nine batters to the plate. Jesus Santana looking to make sure Eastview can bat around. That'll make it a 9-7 game. We are ridiculously high scoring here tonight. What is it? If you're Eastview, you're probably – obviously this isn't how it works, but if they go how they're going, they're putting up 21 today. As that number is going to increase as this one gets to the backstop and will allow another run to come in. So pull in scores on the wild pitch, or the pass ball, not quite sure which, but Huerta advances to third base. And now into double figures are the Patriots. We've got a football score. It is Santana looking at a 1-0. Chops this one. That's foul just between the legs of Huerta. Patrick Reyes is on deck. See if he will come back out for another inning of work. Did have some people up in the pen during this inning. It might have been Patrick himself. But here's the 1-1, one, one. Jesus Santana, the third baseman. Looks this one in, that's strike two, catches the zone. So the odd-numbered innings have been kind to the Eastview Patriots here tonight. Five innings in each, or five runs in each inning there. And then they went four batters in the second, didn't score a run. Swing and a miss there for Santana. So that's his second strikeout of the game, and that ends a very productive third inning for Eastview. They score five on a pair, four singles, a walk, a hit-by-pitch, 
results in five more for Eastview. They've already got ten runs on ten hits. Four errors, though. Uh, Glenn, seven runs on four hits, two errors to them as well. So that is the end of the third inning. As we head now to, to the top of the fourth, it will be the heart of the order here for the Glenn Grizzlies. It was the three, four, and five hitters. So A.J. Click going to be the one to lead it off, coming off an RBI double in his last at bat. We'll be back in about 30 seconds. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Five Live. Question. When you walk into the boardrooms of the most successful companies here in Texas, who do you meet? Answer. Men and women who play high school sports. Education-based high school sports give us more than athletes we can root for. They give us leaders we can depend on. Question. So where will we find tomorrow's leaders? Answer. High school sports. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Rhea is going to get another inning of work. He is through three complete. Hasn't been the smoothest outing, however. He does have the lead right now. It is 10-7. to 7. But Glenn, with a good chance to respond here, they've scored in every inning, two in the first, four in the second, one in the third. And now we get started with the fourth. It is the three-hitter, A.J. Click. Catcher making some good plays today. He has had his hands full behind the plate. One for one today, walking a double. Swings and misses at this one. Maybe got a piece of it, but either way, strike one. This does not look like the same team, <laughs> at least offensively, that played yesterday. But now the 0-1. As Quintanilla said again, another swing, another foul ball, or strike two, excuse me. Getting back into the swing of things. Happy to have baseball season back. Spring training getting going today. As this one's belted into center field. Where to though? Right at him. Tyler only had to take a couple steps to, to find that one, and that's out number one. So a quick out for Patrick Reyes. That brings up Holden Harris, the DH. Grounded out to second base his last time up. But he does have a double and two RBI that he had there in the second inning. Ball one to the DH. Campbell Krishwanski is the one on deck. One zero turns to two zero. Two and one now. Reyes, trying to avoid putting on Holden Harris, who would reach for the second time today. The 3-1 pitch to him. That misses low and inside for ball four. So a one-out base runner for the Glenn Grizzlies. Right fielder up to the plate. He's 0 for 2 today. Fly out and an unassisted play over at first base. Missing outside is Reyes. Throwing a lot of balls today. But Patriots do have the lead. And a little bit of a cushion here. Three runs. Although that is not much here today. Now 2-0. Nobody up in the bullpen right now for Eastview. That one in there 
in the inside corner. Strike one. Chris Wanski looking for his first hit of the game. Rome for Renato on deck. Early on that, got good contact, but sends it foul and out of play. So now two strike count for Chris Wanski. Patrick still with one more pitch to work with. Because it is a 2-2 count with one out and one on. That one's going to skip low. So the count goes full. Another full count. Here's the pitch from Patrick Reyes. One looked low, but Krzywonski went after it, so he'll have another pitch to look at. Count stays full. Harris got on with the walk. And a swing and a miss. Strike three. Excellent pitch right there for Patrick Reyes to send down Krzywonski. Avoiding putting the runner in scoring position with the walk. Now Rome Foronato comes up to the plate with two outs. One man on. It's Holden Harris. Foronato has flown out to center and flown out to right. Takes ball one here. Here's the 1 0. That one high, looking over at Harris at first base, taking an aggressive lead, but it will be 2 0. Toller on deck. That one's in there for strike one. It's Foronato now with a 2 1 count. Number font interesting on these Glenn jerseys, but otherwise I really do enjoy them. Is that one going to miss for ball three? And another throw down at first base, but nothing doing. Yeah, the, the number font does not match up with the, the rest of the jersey. It's a very classic looking jersey with a very like West Virginia looking number font. Is that Mrs. High for ball four? So the second walk of the inning for Reyes. Brings up Ethan Toller who was grounded out to third base and back to back ABs. That would be a perfect outcome for the Patriots here to end the fourth. Calling time here. So Quintanilla trotting up to the pitcher's man to have a conversation with Reyes. Just a brief one. We're good to go again. Is that flag and Left center field still whipping. Strike one. Toller pops this one high and foul. That did stay in play, but just a bit too far of a run for Gary Torres and uh, Trey Walter to go be able to make. But that does put the count at 0-2. So Patrick Reyes, plenty of room to work with, but with one runner on in scoring position. So two runners on, one in scoring position. They don't got too much room for error. If you want to hold on to this lead for a little bit longer, the pitch goes high for 1-2. Koreshi on deck. Reyes hoping he doesn't have to see him. 
So three and a third innings so far for Patrick Reyes. The one two. That one misses just low. Ball two. That is a tough, tough take for Ethan Toller. That one just scraped under the zone. Now two and two with two outs and two runners on. This one's chopped once again to third base. We'll do an unassisted put out there for Jesus Santana. And that is three straight ground outs to third base for Ethan Toller. Got the force out at third. So no runners come in on no hits, but two walks. The threat does not come to pass. Eastview puts up their first blank inning tonight. They still lead it by three. It's 10 to seven. We head now to the bottom of the fourth. You're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now, as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Back into it for the bottom of the fourth. This game is moving right along. The man of the hour, the pitcher, Patrick Reyes, will lead things off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Patrick is two for two with a pair of singles. Much better outing than his 0 for 3 yesterday. He also was able to hold Glenn in check. He's really settled in over these last two innings. Did give up one in the third, but blanked him in the fourth. Reyes taking pitch number one for a ball. So Reyes looking to get another leadoff man on as he takes a big cut at that one and waves at it. In the first and third, Eastview got the leadoff man on. In the second, they did not. And there were only four batters faced in the second inning for, for Glenn. As this one's hit high into the air, but definitely playable. This one might be tough. Just a long run over for the left fielder, and he drops it. But that was in foul territory. That one was drifting foul. He got his glove on it when he was straddling the line, and it dropped in out of play, so just a tough break for Patrick Ray. Is not exactly sure where that one would have landed, but at least he's not out, so he'll have another uh, chance to take a cut at it. But a long run. Austin Wilson couldn't make the catch, but get on his horse all the way out there to try and make the play. But now a one and two. And we have time from Reyes. Now the one, two. This one skips low. Two, two count to the pitcher Reyes. He chased that one. So he'll head down to first base, and the throw over is in time. So Patrick Reyes goes down on strikes to start the bottom of the fourth inning. Andrew Godinez will head to the plate now. A 
A strikeout and a single for Andrew. So he's one for two. In the games we have seen, he is two for three in his at-bats. And with the strikeout, he does like to swing it. <coughs> That's the third strikeout of the game for Eastview, or uh, excuse me, for Glenn Pitchers. Second of the game for Shane Monahan. Got Santana to end the third inning. And gets Reyes to start the second, or the fourth, excuse me, Monahan's second. So he has struck out back-to-back -back batters after giving up a single to Huerta, his, uh, his the first batter he faced. But now it's a 2 nothing count to Godinez. Still at 10 runs. Nobody on here, the second batter of the inning. The 2-0. That's going to miss low as well. Ball three. So a 3-0 count to the DH, Andrew Godinez. Three zero. That one misses low for ball four. Com coming up, Gary Torres. Walking up to Nas. If I had to make a bet, I bet Gary heard that song for the first time on the NBA 2K13 soundtrack because that's exactly where I heard it for the first time, and I love that song. This one's hit high and deep into left field, but very much playable. And that is a quick out for Gary Torres. It's the first time he does not reach safely today. A single and a walk for him in his first two times up. Fly out to left. So out number two, one on for Joe Quintanilla, the catcher. He popped up. His uh, last time up. Ranging over to make the nice play was A.J. Click to get him out. One on. Nice breaking pitch there for Monahan. So that's in there for strike one. That one dropped in. That one misses outside. We've got a ball and a strike to the Patriot catcher. 0-3 in the last game. The 1-1. Misses low. So Quintanilla's looking at two balls and one strike. That one was inside and uh, on the foul tip. Looks like Quintanilla might have caught a little bit of his arm there. So Quintanilla heads over and talks to the third base coach. We have a meeting at the mound between the pitcher and the catcher. Quintanilla shake off that, that little hit he took there. So now two balls and two strikes to him with two outs. Ellis is on deck if we get to him. Back into it. Two, two, two outs. One runner on first base. As that one catches the zone. Got him looking. Strike three. So that'll end the bottom of the fourth. Eastview, unproductive in even innings here so far. That's the first looking strike. Monahan already with three punch outs on Eastview players and a one and a third innings of work. We head now to the top of the fifth. This game is starting to move on, move along a little bit more. Now for Glenn, will be the bottom of their order. Koreshi, Austin Wilson, and then back to the top. Brett Hall will be the first three batters for them. We're going to go ahead and take another 30 second break. We'll be back. In just a moment, you're listening to Patriot Baseball on Vibe Live. Keep it here. 
Why do teenagers play high school sports? My reason why is a sense of purpose. My reason why is to inspire others. One reason student athletes seldom mention is to get an athletic scholarship. They know that only 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. So why do they play? My reason why is friendship. Tell us your reason using the hashtag MyReasonWhy. This message presented by the NFHS and the Texas University Interscholastic League. Here we go. We head to the top of the fifth. Will be a new pitcher. Will be Rendell Ellis on the mound now for the Eastview Patriots. So the end of the road for the starter, Patrick Reyes. He goes four complete innings, gives up four hits, seven runs on those four hits, a pair of or, uh, four errors though. So Patrick Reyes is uh, his run total does not match his actual outing. But still a pretty good outing for him. Four complete innings ate up a lot of that space. Brings up Rendell Ellis. He was playing out in left field, so we will have a defensive substitution. So here's the first pitch, and that's chopped to the shortstop. Berglund comes up on it, and that one just went right underneath his glove. So that's Justin Qureshi getting his second hit of the ball game. I think you can call the error on the, uh, just missed it like that. But a tough, uh, one of those intermediate bounces. You don't know exactly where it's going to be. Ate up the shortstop there a little bit, but now we have Austin Wilson to the plate. He's got a 1-0 count now. Ooh, they were looking at trying to pick off Koreshi, but now it's a 2-0 count to Austin Wilson. Worry about the batter at hand. Don't want to load up the bases before got any outs here as that one finds the inside corner as that is strike one. So now back into it, Austin Wilson. He's one for one today. Who checked his swing there? Might want to go check on it. Nope, they're going to call that a ball. Now 3-1. Well, now we have a meeting of the umpires. As the, uh, the Glenn third base coach coming in, have a conversation. The umpire there uh, in between the pitcher's mound at second base. Assume this call has to stand. Now we're giving him 2-2, so they take away the ball and add in the strike. So the call goes to that umpire over there. Haven't seen it like that where they don't go to him and he just uh, comes in and makes the call for himself but certainly Eastview will take that but now count goes full once again thank goodness I'm doing my scorebook with a pen today oh I can't change that as that one just misses for ball four so the runners will advance we got two on with nobody out here in the top of the fifth so Glenn threatening with the top of the order coming back up Eastview today has really struggled Against the eight and nine hitters today, zero outs between the eight and nine hitters. Qureshi with a ball, a single, and a single. Austin Wilson with a walk, a single, and then right there, a walk. So it will be Brett Hall looking at the first pitch for strike one. The runner in scoring position with nobody out. The 1-0, uh, the 0-1 is popped up high into the air. That's on the infield. Very playable here. Ranging back, and that one will hit the ground, and they're going to say that is out of play, but do we have the uh, the old infield fly rule? Out, 
So I think he just called that a fair, uh, a foul ball. I think he said that landed foul. I think it came off of the, the Eastview first baseman and back into the field of play, but that one's fouled off. So Brent Hall will stay 0-2. Lucky that he's he's still out there. As Torres couldn't make the play on the high pop-up. This can be pretty deceptive, but now the 0-2, and that one is belted into left field. That one's hooking foul, and it will end up that way into the parking lot. Dangerous. As Hall gave that one a ride. Now 0-2, still got runners on first and second. Still nobody out here in the top of the fifth. That one's also fouled back, so Hall aggressive at the plate here. O2. That one just outside. So after Reyes goes four complete, Ellis and a little bit of a jam to start inning number five. It's a nice night out in Georgetown. Temperatures down in the mid-60s, 66 degrees for us. Very cloudy, though, as that one fell right back towards the camera. So Hall working hard for this at-bat. Didn't want to give up that second chance on that drop pop-up. Time called. Luke Berryhill on deck for the Grizzlies. Berryhill, he is hitless in this one so far. The one-two skips into the dirt and well... Good job from Joe Quintanilla to just cut that thing off. Now, the 2-2 two -two count. This is a long A-B for Brett Hall. Still only 2-2. Two -two. Here is the pitch. That one missing just high, ball three. This is an excellent at-bat here for Brett Hall. Works it all the way back to a 3-2. Here's the pitch. That one's fouled off is he is seeing it at the plate right now. Nobody out. This one's popped high into the air. Now coming back on it and making the play behind the plate is Joe Quintanilla for out number one. And after that at bat, it's a tough way for it to end for Brett Hall. He was... He was excellent in that one, and yeah, uh, you just when you have a guy when you when you should have had him out earlier, you absolutely cannot let that guy on base. And Glenton can't get him on there. Eastview doing a good job. That brings up Luke Berryhill. Two on, one out. The first pitch misses for strike one. No, 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 ball one. You know what I meant. It's fine. The one zero. -oh. Skips into the dirt. That went through the legs of Quintanilla. So now the runners will advance. Ellis came to cover the plate there a little bit late, but that one squirted through the legs of the catcher. Now Koreshi up to third. The 2-0 count to Luke Berryhill. A.J. Click on deck for the Glen Grizzlies. So the double play is gone. Now the 2-0. That one's roped right into the Glen dugout for strike one. So Barry Hill around early on that one. Around late, because he is a right-handed batter. Now the 2-1 misses inside, so he's got a 3-1 count. Ellis looking to avoid loading the bases once again. Berryhill trying to sell that. 
uh, as that one catches the inside corner of the zone. The count goes full for the third straight batter. So Ellis having to work hard out there. As there's the 3-2 as that's chopped to third base. As he loses it. He just dropped it. But now they've got a chance to get him at second base. They've got him in a rundown. Now coming over and making the tag out. Okay, they do get him on the tag. So one runner comes to score. Koreshi comes in. Austin Wilson was caught in a pickle between second and third base, and they're not going to be able to get him. He just got the glove on him. So Barry Hill reaches. Is that a. I guess it would just be an error. So third base. The defense on the, the left side of that infield has had, a, had some struggles here tonight. As I think the way that is scored is Luke Berryhill um, reaches via an error. As this one's crushed to left center field. A.J. Click all the way back, and that ball is out of here. A.J. Click got every bit of that baseball, and we are tied up once again, 10 apiece. Three run score with two outs in the top of the fifth inning. We've got a 10 to 10 ball game. AJ Click sending that one way out of here. As we were saying, <laughs> I think Barry Hill reaches via the air. Austin Wilson is just thrown out. He's effectively caught stealing, and then A.J. Click sent that ball to the moon and tied the game up at 10. So back-to-back -back games, which Eastview pitchers have given up a home run to deep left. But now Holden Harris up the D.H., walked his last time up. He's one for two. Now he's looking at a 1-1 count with a ball and a strike. As this one's sent through the gap in the infield right to center. But that's a two-out single for the D.H. Holden Harris, his second hit of the game. Barry Hill, that's the second time that he has reached today uh, on an error. Throwing error from um, the third baseman, Santana. Had a tough night out there. As this one's going to catch the zone for strike one. This is Campbell... Campbell Kriswanski up to the plate. So he is 0 for 1. Now 0 and 2. So Kriswanski, well outside on that one. Not trying to throw a competitive pitch on that one. Seeing if you maybe get him to chase, but no dice, so he'll have another chance at it here. This one, ooh, just low and away, ball two. Foronato on deck. Koreshi, the one that led off the inning, the eight-hole hitter. Krishwanski, the five-hole hitter, so now a 2-2 count with the foul ball. So now one runner on first base with the single from Holden Harris. So a two-run blast from A.J. Click ties the game up here in the fifth, and that will be strike number three to end the top of the fifth inning, but not before Glenn ties this game back up at 10. A pair of singles, a walk, and a two-run blast from A.J. Click. We've got a tie game. It is 10 apiece as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Now looking for your Patriots, the man who just got off the mound, Rendell Ellis will be hitting here, the nine-hole man leading off. And then the lineup will, of course, turn over. So it's Ellis, Berglund, and Pullen to start off the bottom of the fifth. Looks like Shane Monahan going to get another chance at it. Another inning of work for him. He's been good through an inning and a third, but we'll get the bottom of the fifth in just a moment. 
What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. All righty. Randall Ellis. To the plate, the lefty. Patriots looking for a chance to go back on top here as they've been very productive in odd-numbered innings as Ellis is going to pull back on the bunt. Loses the bat. But that one misses for ball one. Ellis got some speed. Going to try and get a bunt single to start off the inning to get this, uh, this hot hitting top of the order. As this one scooped over to first base, they're not going to have anybody to cover. The pitcher didn't have time to get over. Well, the pitcher probably was a little, uh, little slow getting off the mound in the second baseman. That's just not his position to cover. But charging up on it was the first baseman. That was Rome Foronato. And it will be an infield single. Either way for Rendell Ellis. Didn't get the bunt down, but he did chop it just enough to make it tough on him. So Berglund, last time he was up, he was hit by a pitch. He's singled and flown out in his other two at bat, so he is one for two today. That one's going to miss low and away for ball one. Odd numbered innings. So now a 1-1 count to the leadoff man, Berglund. The 1-1, that'll miss high. Count 2-1. Berglund looking for a, another multi-hit game. He's hit very well in the district slate so far with that small sample size, of course. That one missing inside. Very nearly hit Berglund. That would have been his second bean ball of the game. It's like the, the even number San Francisco Giants of the early 2010s. It's Eastview in odd-numbered innings, so hopefully they can get it going here in the bottom of the fifth. They've already got the leadoff man on as that's how all of their big rallies have started. Berglund led off in the first, got on with a single. And then Patrick Reyes got on with a single to start off the third. And now we have an infield single to start off this one. Now another walk. It was Ben Berglund. will head down to first base. So two on, no outs. This could be a start to a good rally here for Eastview. Ryan Pullen comes up to the plate after this meeting at the mound. Maybe we'll have a pitching change, Shane Monahan. On the mound now, he has gone, what, an inning and a third? So the meeting, they're going to leave Monahan up there. Double-digit hits in the game already for the Patriots. Eight in the game right now. Ooh, okay, yeah. Monahan did step off. Here's the pitch. Getting down the bunt is pulling. That's a beauty. 
And the throw over, no, the first baseman wasn't covering the bag. The throw gets away. One run will score. Another run coming around. Pullen digging for third. So the run comes in. Pullen gets all the way to third base on a bunt single with the throwing error. Monahan probably should have just ate it once the first baseman didn't get over to the bag. He kind of double clutched the throw. And that is just a... A crucial mistake there for the Glenn Grizzlies as Rendell Ellis comes around to score easily from first, uh, from second. Ben Berglund streaking around the bases to come home there. Ryan Pullen with a bunt single and an error. Gets all the way to third base. That brings up Tyler Huerta as that'll be it for Monahan. And Tyler Huerta has been seeing it well today, has walked, doubled, and singled today. So he is... It had some excellent ABs, and now with an excellent chance to at least have a sacrifice to bring in Ryan Pullen, who, uh, as you saw on the bunt single, he's absolutely got wheels. So you don't need a whole lot of space for Ryan Pullen to try and get home, but Tyler Huerta going to try and send this thing as, as, as deep as he can, of course. Now with the lead back, another hit. And now up, taking over, will be Campbell Krishwanski. Campbell getting some practice throws in. We'll go ahead and take a quick 30-second break. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Eastview has taken the lead back. We'll be back in just a moment. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. So Chris Wonski to the mound. It's the third pitcher of the evening for the Glenn Grizzlies. Shane Monahan ends up going one and a third. As he came in with two outs in the third inning. It's now the bottom of the fifth with no outs. Now Chris Wonski. Coming to the plate now is Huerta. <laughs> a Kentucky lost as a two seed. March Madness. It's a beautiful thing. Oh no, a Kyla Perry team lost. I hate that. But now here we go, play ball. Tyler Huerta takes the first pitch in there for a ball. Just missed the zone. Huerta has, a, has had a pretty easy day since the first inning out in center field. So this one skips low for ball two, a runner at third base is what Cameron Krishwanski will inherit. That's Ryan Pullen. Now Huerta looking at a 2-0, so may get a good pitch to hit here as he takes a big cut at it and waves at a strike one. Might have gotten a, a piece of it. It looks like he did. It's a beautiful night. The wind has settled down quite a bit. The no movement from the flag out in center field. Take a break here. Now back into the box is Tyler Huerta. Takes another big cut. That's strike number two. So Cameron Krishwansi is coming in 
He's got a 2-2 count to the three-hole hitter for the Patriots. The 2-2 pitch, that's going to miss outside, so the count goes full. Now the 3-2, full count, runner on third. Zwerta punches this into right field. That'll be down for a base hit. So Pullen will come in to score, and Huerta with another single. That's a three-hit game for Tyler Huerta. He has reached safely on all four of his plate appearances. Zwerta's spray chart is all just all over right field. We're going to try and get him on the pickoff. Does have a stolen base today. That one gets away. So Huerta will get there. He's going to round second. He's digging for three. The throw will be in time, but just a little off the line. So Tyler Huerta on the pickoff attempt reaches all the way to third base. So they're giving them bases here on these throwing errors tonight on both sides. But with the pull-in score, that brings it up. 13 to 10 now, so a three-run lead is back. A three-run inning erased a 10 to 7 lead for Eastview in the top half of the fifth. As that one's going to miss inside, Santana looked like it might have hit him, but I guess not. But still, nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. Click going to have a conversation with Cameron. Now the 1-0. Because that one did hit him. So Santana will head to first base after the plunk, and now we've got runners on the corners, still with nobody out here in the fifth. Another productive odd number inning for the Eastview Patriots as Campbell Krishwanski has come in, hasn't been able to retire a batter. So he is over for 2. That brings up Patrick Reyes. Patrick is 2 for 3 with a pair of singles and a strikeout. Now he's got a chance to drive in Huerta from third base. So corners and nobody out. Here's Krishwanski. A big cut for Patrick Reyes at the first pitch. That's strike one. And now Click and Krishwanski going to have another little conversation. Making sure Campbell's all right. The 0-1. As Reyes is back into the box. That one skips low for ball one. Andrew Godinez is on deck. The 1-1. One -one. As Chris wants, he's back to the mound. That one finds the bottom of the zone for strike two. So a much better outing for, for Reyes in the box here today at the plate. He was 0 for 3 yesterday, already 2 for 3 today, but he is facing a 1-2. Here is that 1-2. That's going to miss the outside corner for ball 2. So that will even it up. Two balls and two strikes. Still nobody out here in the fifth. Another long bottom half of the inning. So here's the three, uh, the two-two. That makes it three-two. We are into hour number two for this game. Still got plenty of baseball left to be played, but Glenn down to their final six outs. 
as that's going to be fouled off as Reyes is going to be able to stay alive. But the way Glenn's played, they have put him up. So the Patriots are looking to get any cushion that they can, any, any added run. Because the way this game has gone, a, a three-run, even a four-run lead isn't safe. As this one is also fouled back, so this is an excellent at-bat here, no matter what, for Patrick Reyes. Even with good at-bats, even if you do all the right things at the plate, you're not necessarily going to be rewarded with a hit. This one's chopped along the first baseline. They'll step on one. They'll go home with it. The throw goes wide. The run scores. Going over to third base now will be Jesus Santana. He will hold up there. So they get the out. The runner at the plate will be safe. And Santana advances from second to third during all the ruckus. Tyler Huerta comes home. Patrick Reyes with the sacrifice, effectively. So that's the first out of the inning. That'll be strike one to Godinez. So he's got a runner on third with one out, still sacrifice in play. He's going to watch that one in. Click trying to frame it, but no dice. So one and one. This one cut. Oh, not cut off. It did get through. So the runner comes home. And Andrew Godinez, that is his second hit of the ball game. He struck out, singled, walked, and now singled once again. That brings up Gary Torres. Gary's one for two. He flew out his last time up. Singled in the first inning. Chops this one foul. Joe Quintanilla on deck. That will be once again the ninth batter of the inning. Now with just one out, as Quintanilla has the leg guards on as he's taking his practice cuts. So this one's going to skip low, ball one. Santana comes home. Puts the lead now 15 to 10. As Huerta and Santana both come home to tack on two more. So that's five runs in each odd inning so far, and there's still just one out. Runner on second. As this one's chopped to first base, as they will get the out there. However, Godinez is going to move up to third base. So Godinez advances to second on the balk, and then on the ground out there advances to third. And now looking that one in is Quintanilla. That's strike one. Quintanilla, though, for his last six. Looking to bring home a one more runner here. He's looking at a no one. This one lifted well into center, but that's going to be right at the center fielder. Brett Hall, and that will be the end of the bottom of the fifth inning, but that is the third time today that Eastview has sent nine batters to the plate. They get four hits, a walk, and a hit by pitch to the tune of five runs. They lead it now 15 to 10, five in the first, five in the third, now five in the fifth. We head now to the top of the sixth where Glenn is going to have to really – get on it offensively. They've played a good game. I mean, when you score 10 runs, you, you feel like you're going to win, but Eastview has just, has just hammered this pitching.
and there's been a lot of a lot of errors on both sides to, to really inflate some of those numbers. But it'll be Rome Foronato due up for the Glen Grizzlies. And it looks like Eastview is going to go ahead and rock with Randall Ellis. So we'll go ahead and keep it here. It'll be Foronato, Toller, and Koreshi due up for Glen, the, Glen, the Glen Grizzlies. There it goes. Foronato, the last time he was up, he walked. And the three-hitter, Koreshi, he has reached safely all three times. He's two for two with two singles and a walk. Quintanilla back out onto the field. But, Glenn, down to six outs. They need five. Here's the first pitch that misses high for ball one. So Foronado, 1-0. Oh. That one misses tight. So now Foronado, the, third, the first baseman, excuse me, with the 2-0. -oh. Do that every now and then. That one hit him. So on all three of those pitches, Randall Ellis was inside, and for that one it just got a little bit too much as he hits Foronado, so that's a leadoff man on for the Glen Grizzlies. Toller is grounded out to third base all three times. It was an unassisted ground out last time as the bases. They got runners on first and third, so they got the force at third. So that's a look, uh, looking at a strike there for his first pitch. That one inside as well. Fortunately, not hitting Toller. Now the one and one. Ooh, just high for ball two. The 2-1, that one misses high. Quintanilla tried to frame it. The, the top part of that zone seems pretty low here today. It's been consistent, but he's not given a lot at the top of the zone. That one well high for ball four. So two runners on base, a hit by pitch, and a walk for Rendell Ellis. Brings up Justin Koreshi, who Eastview has not been able to get out today. As I said pair of singles and a walk. Now he has a golden opportunity to get Glenn right back into this thing. As here's Ellis with the first pitch to him. That one right down the pipe. Strike one. Eastview looking to even up their district record at one and one. Here's the pitch. As that one's punched into right field. Playable settling underneath it and making the catch. No tag opportunity. That's Trey Walter out there in right field. No, it looks like well, we do have a substitution. Patrick Reyes is now back in right. They have moved Trey Walter over to left field. Makes sense as Ellis was in left, so they bring him to the mound. They push Walter from right field to left field, and they put the former pitcher, Patrick Reyes, over in right. So those are your defensive subs with all the pitching. Now, one out on the fly. They finally get Koreshi. But now Austin Wilson takes that pitch. Now he's looking at a 2-0 count. Two-0 to Wilson. That one right down the middle. Strike one. Austin Wilson, another tough out. He has two walks and a single, so kind of flipped from Koreshi. But the bottom of the order has been tough. As this one's chopped on the infield right to the shortstop. This is going to be a tough throw, and he will beat it out. So the bases will be loaded with one out here. That brings up the top of the order, Brett Hall coming to the plate. An infield single for Austin Wilson. Brings Ethan Toller to second base. 
brings Rome Foronato to third. Is there still just one out in the bottom of this sixth? Or the top of this sixth, excuse me. Here's the pitch. That one misses high to the right-hander. Yep, that top of the zone is he's not calling anything up there. Luke Berry Hill on deck. Bases are loaded. This one is popped high up on the right field. That's hooking foul. It will stay in play. Diving to make the catch. And now the runners will tag. The throw up the line. But the runner will be safe. Glenn may be getting away with a little bit of, of leaving early on the tag, but the run does come home on the sacrifice fly from Brent Hall. So the run scores for Rome Foronato, Ethan Toller comes to the plate. And it looks like Austin Wilson also tagged up on that. That one's low. We've got ball one. That one misses high. I believe now it's a 3 0 count. So just one run scores there. And that was a, a risky play out there in right field for Patrick Reyes. That's not a four pitch walk, that's a strike to Barry Hill. Throw on the pickoff, not in time, but it will be a walk to Luke Berryhill. That brings up A.J. Click. And uh, I don't know if you remember, last time he was up, he had a laser beam out to left field, and now he has got the bases loaded with a chance to tie this thing up. He's two for three today, a walk in the first, a double in the second, line out in the fourth, and now in the fifth inning, a home run. We'll have a meeting at the mound. See if Ellis will have the opportunity to face click. He did. I don't think he was the. He was not the one to give up the home run. No, he was. He was. Because Reyes went four innings. Ellis came in in the fifth, and that's when the home run happened. But it looks like it's going to be John Doherty to take over for Randall Ellis. He'll step to the mound, and we will take a break to give him a chance to warm up. We've got a huge A.B. coming up. A.J. Click has a chance to tie this game back up at 15, as this has been an exciting one. We'll be back in 45 seconds for more Eastview Baseball on Vibe Live. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. As John Doherty to the plate in a huge spot, or excuse me, to the mound in a huge spot. AJ Click to the plate in a huge spot. As now, the bases are loaded with nowhere to put the three hole hitter, AJ Click, who has doubled and homered already today. That one going to miss high. As any punch that Eastview has given, Glenn has been right back there to answer. 
This is a 1-0. Now a 1-1. One one. That one does catch the top part of the zone. Bases are loaded. As this one is drilled deep to left. Did he get another one? Back at the wall and gone! A grand slam for A.J. Click has tied this game up at 15 in the top of the sixth. A.J. Click with the monster game. He's got what? That's four RBI, two, six, seven RBI in this game as we are tied back up at 15. So that brings up the DH Holden Harris. Singled his last time up. So after putting up a five spot in the bottom of the fifth, Glenn responds with a five spot here. As this one's drilled right at Berglund who leaps up to make the catch. Couldn't have had that a moment ago. So, on two walks, a hit by pitch, a single, and an absolute blast from A.J. Click, his second of the game at a two-run shot, and now a four-run shot. We call that a grand slam. As the Glenn Grizzlies send eight to the plate, we head now to the bottom of the sixth. Eastview with a chance to, uh, to get the lead back as we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back with more Patriot Baseball right after this. Meet Josh. Hi, everybody. Josh is a high school basketball player, solid shooter, great teammate. Hey, don't forget my tenacious D. And he's my son. Uh -huh. So what does Josh do to be the best basketball player he can be? I play tennis. Studies show that student athletes here in Texas who play more than one high school sport are more likely to excel. Tennis does more than improve Josh's conditioning. It gives him a fresh competitive outlet, reduces the risk of injury by cross-training, and introduces him to different coaching techniques and new friends. Don't get me wrong, hoops are my first love. Tennis just gives me a little break. So when the new season begins, Josh isn't burned out on basketball. He's eager to play. And you can see the difference in his game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Campbell Krishwanski is back to the mound as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Zarendel Ellis will lead things off. He singled his last time up. It'll be Ellis Berglund and Pullen here in the bottom of the sixth. Eastview has been gloriously unproductive in even innings. In the second and fourth, at eight combined batters, one double and one walk were the only reasons. And then... In innings one, three, and five, Eastview has sent up 27 batters. And in innings two and four, they've sent up eight. So they're going to get the bunt down, but foul tipped it looked like. So Ellis, strike one to him. Campbell Krishwanski, of course, still on the mound. That one misses low. He's got ball one. As this one's punched into right field, this should be playable, and it is, settling underneath it to make the out. 
Now here comes Berglund. He walked his last time up. He's reached safely three times, only has one hit. He was plunked and walked the other two times, but that's a fly out to right field for Randall Ellis for out number one. So either Eastview gets the leadoff man on, or they, uh, or they really struggle in the inning. They've got the leadoff man on in each of the odd-numbered innings, but here we go for Ben Berglund, strike one. Looks like Eastview might have to do it in the bottom of the seventh. For a walk-off opportunity if they can hold Glenn. But here's an 0-1. That catches the outside corner for strike number two. The 2 just got a piece of it because that keeps it alive for Ben Berglund. Nobody on with one out. Bottom of the sixth. 0-2 count to the leadoff hitter, Ben Berglund. He tips this one into the glove of the catcher. That's a swinging strikeout for Ben Berglund. So that's out number two. Now the two-hole hitter. Ryan Pullen. So Berglund not the leadoff hitter for the inning, but he is the leadoff man in the order. So time for a two-out rally for the Patriots. It's Ryan Pullen with Tyler Huerta on deck. Three for, th no, two, uh, three for four, excuse me, today for Ryan Pullen. He's got three singles and a ground out. Takes that one for ball one. If Pullen can't make anything happen, then you're looking at a bottom of the seventh when you're putting out Huerta, Santana, and Reyes. So Eastview with some good luck there. But Pullen sends that one pretty deep to right, ranging over in right center field. He in the center fielder make contact with each other, but that is put away by the right fielder. And that will be a 1-2-3 inning. And that is the first such inning for either side in this game today. So two flyouts to right and a strikeout for Eastview is all they do in the sixth, but that's what we expect in these even-numbered innings. Glenn will come up to the plate now to try and take the lead back for the first time since the early going in this one. They will have the man who was on the mound, Campbell Krishwanski, out there to start. will be the leadoff man. Rome Foronato and Ethan Toller will be the three for Glenn. As we head to the top of the seventh, this has been an incredibly exciting game. Hope you're all doing all right. Hope you're all hanging in there. We'll be back in just about 30 seconds. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Here we go for the top of the seventh. Krishwanski to the plate. Quick score update for the district. In the top of the seventh, Leander leads Cedar Park 11-6 as Krishwanski fouls that one back to get us underway in the seventh. Doherty back out there on the mound. That one misses inside, so a one and one count. The one and one from Doherty. Check swing. Way to hold up for Krishwanski. Turned his body all the way around, but kept the bat like right on his shoulder. So that'll be a two one count now. That one well outside. Krishwanski, the leadoff man in danger of being put on base here.
The three one swung on and missed. Krishwanski has the count go full, reaching out to try and get that one. So that one will send Krishwanski to first base. So the leadoff man is on once again. Is Foronado going to come to the plate? It is the bottom of the order coming up here for Glenn, but Eastview has had a re real hard time with the bottom of this order. Rome Foronado comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2, but he also has a hit by pitch and a base on balls. And then Ethan Toller, who's 0 for 3 with a walk, will be up after him. But now Krishwanski, the leading run, is on at first base. That'll be strike one to Foronado. Looking to get the bunt down to advance the runner. A little bit of small ball here for the Glen Grizzlies. So that one misses. This one's high. They're going to go down to first for the pickoff. It's not there. So it's a 2-1 to Foronado. Looking to draw his second walk of the game. Doherty having a hard time finding the zone here in the top of the seventh. Swings at it. The throw down to second base is not in time. So there goes the double play, but Foronado does wave at it. So no hit and run. It is a 2-2 two and two to the first baseman, Rome Foronado. Here's the pitch. One misses low. The count goes full. Here's the payoff from Doherty. Ooh, got him. That one just off the plate, but Rome Foronado chased after it. And that is a swinging strikeout for the first out of the inning for John Doherty in the East View Patriots. Now Ethan Toller comes up to the plate with a runner in scoring position. On deck will be Justin Qureshi. First pitch misses outside. Doherty's been, looks like he's been trying to pitch to the outside for, for most of this outing, and I think that's what went wrong against Click is that he just kind of tailed it a little bit too much over the heart of the plate, and Click took advantage. Because that's a swing and a miss there for Toler. That one's high, just ducking under it. He's Toler. It's hard to say it from the comfort of the press box, but you almost want that to hit you. And so here's the 2 1 as this one's popped up into the air. This will be a tough play. It's trailing in, and that will be a foul ball as Gary Torres. Went chasing after that thing. He kind of got twisted up. He had a chance at it, but couldn't find it. But now the count goes 2-2. Two and two. Doherty looking for his second strikeout of the inning, his second strikeout of the game. So Koreshi is on deck. No double play opportunity. Krishwanski is at second base. Good lead for him there. Here's the pitch. It is belted into center field. Making the diving play on it is Tyler Huerta, which saves a run. If he doesn't make that play, that ball rolls all the way to the backstop. That's a huge play for the center fielder, Tyler Huerta, to save a run and maybe save the game. Haven't called his name much defensively. 
But that is a huge stop there for the center fielder. Because he laid out for it, and if that ball got over his glove or, or, or something, that the left fielder or the right fielder would have had to chase after it, or Huerta would have had to pop up and run after it. And honestly, Toler could have gotten three bags off of it. But instead, it's just an out. Uh, is this one's going to skip to the backstop. Krzywonski had to stay at second, but now he will advance to third base. But no matter there, really, uh, anything into the outfield was probably going to score him anyway with two outs. But he is just 90 feet closer now. He stole one base. The pitch getting to the backstop gets him third. Now Koreshi is looking at a 2 to nothing count. They've had a hard time getting this kid out all game. That's going to miss inside a 3-0 count. A pair of singles and a walk for the third baseman. Chris Wanski, 90 feet away. Is that one right down the pipe, strike one. Wilson is on deck. We may have an opportunity for extra innings here tonight if they can't get out of it. As this one's right down the middle as well, we have a full count. 3-2, two, two outs in the top of the seventh in a tie game. This is a gigantic spot for the third baseman, Justin Koreshi. As this one's chopped to the shortstop, coming up on it is Berglund. The throw over is not in time. He was pulled off the bag. So the run comes in to score. And Glenn has taken the lead here with two outs in the top of the second on an infield single by Justin Koreshi. The eight-hole hitter has been a killer today for Eastview. 31 combined runs. As now Eastview knows they're going to need to get two. Austin Wilson comes to the plate. He has uh, two walks and two singles in the game here. Now one ball and no strikes to the final man in the lineup, Austin Wilson, the left fielder. In there for strike one. Count even, runner on first, two outs for Doherty. Ooh, check swing there, I guess he held up. That's ball two. Glenn doing a good job of, of holding back on some of these swings today. They've had a few that have been close. They've had one that was called, but now here's the 2-1. That's going to miss outside for ball three. Lineup will turn over to Brett Hall. The 3-1, that's going to be high. That'll be another man on the bases. Austin Wilson, that moves Koreshi into scoring position for Brett Hall. Hall now flew out his last time up, but it did bring a run home, so a sack fly for him. He's got a two RBI double back in the second inning. Stockerty struggling a little bit to throw strikes right now. That one misses well outside for ball one. Now the 1-0 to the leadoff hitter, Brett Hall. See, so pops this one foul and out of play. The sixth batter that Doherty has faced here in this top of the seventh inning. Glenn has a one-run lead. This one's fouled back here. That's two strikes now on Brett Hall. 
Tyler Huerta will lead things off for Eastview in the bottom half of the seventh. Santana Reyes, Godinez will be behind him. Now the one, two. Here's the pitch. Ooh, that one just low. Broke a little bit too much. A good take there for Brett Hall. The 2-2 two -two. misses. So this is a prolonged inning, a prolonged game. Now into the two and a half hours. There's all that offense. That's the price of it. But here's the 3-2, bases loaded. This one's popped up on the infield. Doherty going to chase after it. The catcher going to come under it, and that skips on the floor. No one covering home, and another run comes in to score. So another defensive error for Glenn in this one. First baseman didn't come up for that. That's probably Torres' ball, but Torres has struggled with those pop-ups today. But now it's a two-run lead going into the uh, – well, still here in the top of the seventh. Luke Berryhill is on to uh, to hit now. That brings Koreshi home, and now Wilson all the way at third base. As they got him on the pickoff. So how about that? <laughs> Finally today, you're able to get – somebody on a pickoff after all these throwovers. So Barry Hill doesn't get his A-B if this game does go extras. He will be the one to lead it off for Glenn. But we head down to the bottom of the seventh. Five runs in the first, five runs in the third, five runs in the fifth. Zero in the second, zero in the fourth, zero in the sixth. So if patterns tell us anything, it's going to be an easy win for the Eastview Patriots coming up right after this. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Will be Tyler Huerta to lead things off for the Eastview Patriots. And either way in this game, an end is in sight. Glenn puts up two. One of those earned. But it will be the 3-4-5 hitter, so Eastview putting their best foot in front of them here for this bottom of the seventh. Now it will be Chris Wonski to the mound once again. He's been solid in his relief appearances. Eastview needs two to tie it, three to win it. Tyler with a three-hit game already. He's reached safely in all four plate appearances. Takes this one high for ball one. As this has been one heck of a game here tonight. So it's taken us all the way to the bottom of the seventh as Huerta watches that one in for ball two. So Tyler already working on an excellent night. He's looking at a 2-0 count. Try and get on base and get a rally going. As Santana's on deck, he is one for three. As Huerta swings at this one, fouls it off, strike one. Santana has a single, a pair of strikeouts, was hit his last time up and did come around to score. Patrick Reyes will be the third man up. He's one for two today. Or, excuse me, two for three today. Now two and one. 
That's going to miss high. So Huerta looking for his second walk of the game. That misses. So Tyler Huerta draws a five-pitch walk to get us going. And in every inning that Eastview has scored, they have gotten the lead off man on. Brings up Santana. Had his one hit back in the first inning. The tying run is at the plate. That one finds his own strike one. The 0-1. Krishwanski looks at Huerta. This is a chopper. This will be a tough throw. It's a long one, and it is in time. Just getting Jesus Santana. A beautiful throw over from third base from Justin Koreshi, who has just been a thorn in the side of Eastview here tonight. So a 5-3 put out for out number one. Brings up Patrick Reyes. Had a unassisted put out to first base, but it did bring in a run his last time up. So Reyes with a runner in scoring position. Takes the first pitch high for ball one. Thirteen hits for Eastview, twelve for Glenn. But Glenn has the lead. This one's punched in the left. That's going to drop. Huerta had a bad jump. No, no reason trying to risk that. You still need two. So Huerta doesn't push it. He stays there at third base. So now on the single from Patrick Reyes, his third base hit of the game puts runners at the corners. And now the winning run, Andrew Godinez, is at the plate, the DH here tonight. He's two for three. He singled his last time up singled in the third, has struck out and walked as well. So Huerta on third. Godinez takes that one in the zone, strike one. Gary Torres is on deck. Double play is in order now. Patrick Ray is on first base. Is Godinez ooh Tough call on the check swing is now it's 0-2 to Andrew. This is the only way for this to go is extras. This here's 0-2. That one catches the inside corner, strike three. Eastview down to their final out, bringing up Gary Torres. So Gary, the lefty, coming up. Joe Quintanilla is on deck. Torres takes that one. Well framed by Click, who's had a monster game on both sides of the field. But now the 0-1. As Krishwanski has really come alive here in the seventh. That one's going to miss outside for strike, or uh, excuse me, for ball one. Glenn fans wanted it. They wanted that one bad. But here is the 1-1. Runners on the corners here. Bottom of the seventh. Two outs. That one misses high. Ball two. Swing and a miss for Gary Torres. So Eastview now down to their final strike. It's a 2-2 count. Runners on the corners. Two outs. They trail it by two. 
Campbell, Krishwanski steps to the mound. Here's the 2-2 pitch. That one's chopped to second base. Second baseman fields it cleanly, but he is safe. That was a bang-bang play there at first base. But Gary Torres beats it out for the infield single. Tyler Huerta able to come around and score. Reyes moves up to second. Now Joe Quintanilla. He has struggled mightily since district play has started. Joe is 0 for 7 across yesterday and today. So this will be a gigantic time for him to break out of his slump with a runner on second base that would tie the game. The winning run is on the base pass. As Quintanilla drills this to left, the play on the ball, it's no good! It gets over the left fielder's head! Ball all the way back to the wall! Run around third! He's coming home! Eastview's gonna win the game! Eastview locks it off! Joe Quintanilla! 18 to 17! The odd number magic for the Patriots. They win it as the ball went all the way to the wall. And that'll do it here. Final score. And yes, this is a baseball game. 18 to 17. Eastview pulls it off. They get the rally. Quintanilla did it. Breaks through the 0 for 7. The biggest hit of the ball game. And they pick up the win, knocking off Glenn at home, 18 to 17. Combined in this game, oh my, <laughs> 27 hits, nine errors, 35 runs. How about that? Joe Quintanilla wins this one in the only game, the only way that this game was going to end in walk-off fashion, one of the most exciting games of the season. And that will do it for us here. Final score, 18 to 17. The Patriots win. We will head to the weekend now. Eastview pulls it off. Georgetown is up next. So the, uh, the Crosstown rivals here for Eastview. They'll be on the road all week next week. Tuesday on the road at Georgetown. Friday on the road at Rouse. Both of those should have a 7 p.m. first pitch time. But an incredibly exciting win here for Eastview on St. Patrick's Day. It had everything. A game-tying grand slam in the sixth inning. Glenn took the lead in the seventh. And then... The Patriots come roaring all the way back to score three when they needed it most. Out in left field, Austin Wilson tried to make the sliding stop, but as we were saying uh, back in that seventh inning with Huerta, Huerta made the diving stop, and I said if it gets to the backstop, he probably comes around and scores there. And as you saw right there, it did get to the backstop on Wilson, or, or excuse the wall uh, on Wilson, and that opened the door for Gary Torres to come all the way around to score on what was what really amounts to a to a bloop single to left. He scores from first to third. And it couldn't have a better ending to the first home game of the district season. That'll do it for us here at Vibe. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. A lot of fun here. A lot of offense. About nearly three hours in that game, but every minute of it was enjoyable. I have been Jack Farrell. Hope you all have a great night, a great rest of your weekend, and we will see all of you on Tuesday on the road at Georgetown.